Welcome to Bell Chapel United Methodist Church, Season 1, Episode 8 of Remote Watch. We're glad to have you with us this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you find yourself gathered for church with whoever you're gathered with. We appreciate your prayers, your thoughts, and, and the resources that you provide. I'm overwhelmed. We are overwhelmed here at Bell Chapel, how God provides for us in these moments. Uh, so we, we thank you. I also want to say uh, thank you to uh, all those who help us, uh, from Teresa Brad, who does our special music, uh, and she will be singing this morning, as well as uh, Cameron Wattis, who's the uh, technician and direct film technician, and he's our editor as well. And then we've got uh, Anna Wattis, who, who has a dual purpose. She's the director. She's in charge here. And she also uh, makes an appearance for Children's Moments. And then uh, Karen Taylor, who is our pro executive producer. So we want to thank each and every one of them uh, for their participation and uh, welcome. Now, today's a special day, Mother's Day. I'm thankful. Today is May 10th. Well, actually, we're, we're recording this on May 8th, but May 10th, and that is my oldest daughter, Sue's birthday. So, happy birthday, Sue. Hope you have a great day and uh, with the kids and enjoy the company of one another. And uh, your great mother, as is my other daughter, Sarah. So, really proud of you. Now, we have some special guests to thank our mothers for being moms. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Love you. I and, and, and thank you for all the moms for helping us and taking care of us and love and take and loving us. And that's all I got. I'm thankful for my grandmothers, grandmothers and mom because they always. Um, give me food off the plate on the plate every day, and my mom also gives gives me clean clothes to wear every day, and she also does laundry, so I don't have to do it. And she also doesn't make me do my chores. Happy, Happy Mother's Day, day mom. mom! My mom is nice and too snuggly. Mommy's a superhero, and it, she's lovable. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Some things I love about my mom is she's hardworking. She cares about people. I love her, and she um she does stuff with me. And she introduced me up when I'm sad. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. What are some things you like to do with your mom? Helpful. What do you like to help her do? Clean up. Clean up? What are some things you love about her? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, is there anything else you like to do with her? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Play with her. You like to play with her? Okay. Anything else? Help her clean up my room. Help her clean up your room? Okay. Anything else? Help her do chores. Help her do chores? Okay. <laughs> happy, happy Mother Day, Mom. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to my mom and grandmas. I like that you help me cook and that you give me nice things and play with me and love me. I hope you have a good Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all that you do. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. I, like, I love Mommy because she helps us do schoolwork. I love mommy because she plays with us. I love mommy because she takes care of us. Mm. Will you join me in our call to worship? For our mothers who 
have given us life and love. For those women who have nurtured us in life and faith, For those who have encouraged us in living the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. Help us to honor them in everything we do. Would you join me in our prayer of invocation? This day we gather together with eager hearts, hungry for your word, yearning for the joy you promise in love. O oh God, together we hold a vision of your kingdom, a people of prayer and open hearts, a loving body of Christ eager to learn and eager to share. On this day of celebrating your love, we lift to you those who have given us life, those who have loved us, those who have blessed us, and those who have taught us, our mothers. May your blessing pour out Upon the women who gave us birth and those beautiful strong women of faith who have been mothers to us along our journey. In these uncertain moments of life, grant us the courage and strength that as we continue our journey, we too may be found faithful in your service. Until you come and sit a while with me, you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I. You raise me up to more than I can be. Raise me up to more than I can be. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather in our homes. Uh, we're thankful for family and friends. We're thankful, Lord, that you care for us, that you love us, when you call us to, to care and love one another. Lord, we uh, pray for those who are in the healthcare field, our doctors and our nurses, uh, those who are helping those who are sick. Lord, we uh, pray that you would continue to guide and direct those who are uh, trying to find a cure or, or a vaccine, and we pray that you would guide, give them guidance and direction. We pray for our leaders of, of our nation uh, in these moments of, of life and uncertainty. We also remember our service personnel, young men and young women, far from home, and Lord, we just pray that uh, you would be with them. We also have those with physical needs. We remember Barb and and young Jacob and young Gabriel. We pray that you'll be with Perry and Lynn. Lord, remember Mitch and Mary Ann and Jeannie and Roger and Roy and Travis. Lord, we pray for young Jaden and Charlie and Jim and Mary Jane and Becky. Lord, uh, remember those who are struggling in life. We remember those who are struggling with their relationships. Lord, we pray for those who are depressed or uncertain, feeling isolated or lonely. We pray that you would send those to minister to them. We remember our shut-ins, those in the nursing home, and those who are in ministry to them. Lord, help them to sense your presence and your peace, even in these uncertain times. Lord, for your church, we pray for guidance and direction. We thank you for the opportunity we have to reach out and go beyond these walls really, and, and reach out with the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know your grace is always sufficient. We pray for the Androsi family in a time of loss. We pray that you would surround them with your love and your care and help them to sense your presence and your peace. Lord, we struggle in all of life. Help us, even as we struggle and wrestle to be the people you've called us to be, help us always to remember to pray, even as we taught your first disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 14. I'm reading from the message this morning. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in Him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the Master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let pet petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, the sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. 
Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. I'm glad in God, far happier than you would ever guess. Happy that you're again showing such strong concern for me. Not that you ever quit praying and thinking about me. You just had no chance to show it. Actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with as little as with much. With much as with little. I've found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I don't mean that your help didn't mean a lot to me. It did. It was a beautiful thing that you came alongside me in my troubles. May God have his rich blessing to the reading of his word to our understanding this morning. First, let me say thank you to all the women who have nurtured us in faith and in life. Really, that's Mother's Day. Uh, we're thankful for our moms, for our grandmoms, for our aunts, for Sunday school teachers. Uh, in a few months, you'll be thankful for a preacher, uh, as uh, Diane will be with you. So we're thankful for teachers and nurses and doctors and cooks and bus drivers, all those women who have helped nurture us in faith and in life. We're appreciative. The letter that Paul is writing is a personal letter of thanks and encouragement. And it's to the women who helped him. It's to the church as well. But he mentions the women specifically. Not the way he talks about them in Timothy, but this is a, a different letter, but it's a personal letter. It's uh, not the most theological work when I was thinking about what I'd like to preach on. Philippians 4 the whole chapter is one of my favorite chapters. Romans is the most theological work, and, and I hope to, to get to one of those chapters, perhaps the eighth chapter, somewhere down the, in episode 10 or 11 maybe, uh, if we get that far. But for now, let's remember that this isn't a theological work as much as it's a, it's a practical work. It shows us how to live out the life of faith. I've often thought, don't tell me how to do something. Show me. Lead by example. The picture this morning with the sermon title, Pass the Ice Cream, is Kathy showing Jonathan and, and Perry. She's got her head down, and they're icing Christmas cookies. Sugar cookies that Kathy learned how to, to make and ice from her mother, and her mother learned from her mother. Uh, that's how life works. We're, they demonstrate to us how uh, life works, what we're to do in life, and then they put it into practice. We learn, you see, Paul says, put into practice what you have learned and heard and seen and realized. In other words, what you've experienced with me. We learn through example. And quite frankly, we teach through example as well. You, you saw the clips of the children. You know, Alexander has learned that he's loved. And uh, Cain was it that uh, learned that you can giggle as much as you want. And David's just thankful that he doesn't have to do the laundry himself. Uh, anyway. Uh, we, we teach by example. It's coming up besides our children. This first picture is uh, one of 
little Alexander, and at the time he was a little fearful of the fish, but he wasn't fearful when his mother took hold of the fish and, and, and calmed him, you see. That's how we, we come up alongside people. That's what my, Paul says, make sure everyone you meet, you, they realize you're on their side. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, last few weeks we've been cleaning out drawers. Really not a whole lot to do in life. So we're cleaning out drawers, not only because we are where we are in life, but we've been sifting and sorting pictures and cards, all those keepsakes, you know, trying to figure out what to keep, what to toss, trying to, to rid ourselves of some things. I, I came across the card. A Father's Day card, along with the Mother's Day card, but the Father's Day card still had the check in it from 2009. I kept the card. I cashed it. No, I didn't cash the check. I called and said, thanks for the check. My daughter said, cash it. I said, no, it means too much to me now. It's a gift, you see. But the real gifts, the things we kept, were the words and the thoughts. And more important than that, you see, the lives that we associated with the cards and the words and the encouragements that helped shape us to be who we are on our own. Some of those will stay with us from now to the end. And... Some of the stuff, quite frankly, got pitched. You know how it is in life. We started reflecting on life, just how blessed we've been. Kathy and I were fortunate. Both our moms raised us in the church. I was in the church when it wasn't a nice day. I wasn't fishing with my dad on Sunday. We were always in the church. It was part of our life, as it was with Kathy. And, and more than that, I saw what they did for us as the, our children remember what they did and, and how they did it with love and affection. I remember my mother volunteering to take our youth group to Idora Park. Now, that's one thing you want to do, fill your cards with teenagers, 13 and 14 year olds, and uh, take them to the park. Uh, but she did it because she loved me and wanted me to be comfortable. And quite frankly, I think it was a Ford Fairlane 500, a convertible that my dad had just purchased that was, oh, what a ride. Anyway, I, I remember feeling good about her being with me. And then what I remember about Kathy's mother, Helen, was when, when Kathy had a baby, she was there to help. When Kathy had her tonsils out or was sick, she was there. If we were painting a living room or dining room and Kathy needed help, she was always helping. We learn through example. Now, what I'm going to say is that we're human beings. We all know we're human beings. And despite the complexity of the human heart, and the complexity of the mind, the living of life is a practical matter. It's what we do and how we do it and the attitude in which we do it that makes a difference. Paul simply says it like this. How do you handle anxiety? Well, let's be honest with ourselves. Most of us fuss and fume. Uh, we fret or we ignore it altogether. Paul says the practical advice is let your petitions and praise shape your worries into prayer. Next picture you have is Joel, my youngest grandson. Quite frightened, as you can see, of St. Nick. And mom's right there, comforting and counseling and and, and consoling, and that's the closest thing we got that year to a picture with Santa Claus. What do you do when you're anxious? 
you look for someone to comfort you. Paul saying, find that comfort in God. God cares about you. God loves you. And then he says, let your petitions and praise shape your worries into prayer. Let Christ displace worry as the center of your life. Well, how do you, how do, you do that? And then more practical advice. Focus on the positive, not the negative. There's a, enough negative stuff out there. We all see it almost every day. Focus on the good stuff. Be an optimist. You don't want to be, you don't want to be depressing. You, you look for people when you, to surround you in life that are, are, are optimistic or, or the ones that are depressing. The ones when you, uh, what's the uh, Saturday Night Live, Debbie Downer. Or do you look for someone who's bubbling over with the spirit? Someone that's encouraging or deflating. I can tell you, every doggone card, every doggone letter, everything that we kept were from people who were bubbling and encouraging and supporting, who cared and showed their care and concern in life. Paul says, focus on the true, and the noble, the reputable, the gracious, the best, not the worst. Think about those things. See, as complex as the mind is, it can only think of one thing at a time. We can either be down in the dumps or we can be thinking about the good stuff of life. We're either depressed or we're thanking God for how fortunate we are in life. For the young lives that we have, continue to have a responsibility to shape. I'm thankful for all those folks who went before. I, I think I've named them. I think I could go through. You know, we had uh, Mrs. Neal and Mrs. Hartford, who, uh, Mrs. Ginder, who always bought us donuts from the bakery when we stay overnight. Mrs. Hartford, who, who made us eggs or, or let us make eggs in her kitchen. I, I think that's one brave soul. You, uh, have Mrs. Van Foss, and her house was, uh, Harry's house was right close to the park, and so we found ourselves there when moments of storms and rains and when we were hungry, and her refrigerator was always filled with good stuff, so we could make us a sandwich, or she would make us a sandwich. Mrs. Mulch, Mrs. Oakley, Mrs. Hall, wouldn't dare call them by their first name, too much respect for what they did and how they did it, you see. That's how we learn. That's how we learn to live. The life that means something, you see. We are drawn as human beings to those who comfort, not control. Those who love, not frighten. Those who demonstrate love and patience and kindness and gentleness and understanding and faith and service with positive attitudes. Now, their working tools are mutual respect, not guilt. Have you ever known someone who wanted to guilt you into doing something? You know you're the only one who can. You know, oh. God doesn't work that way. God simply says our response to his grace is to love and to care, to be patient with one another, to show kindness, to gentleness, understanding. Now, when you focus on the positive and the good, you find that you'll find, as Paul found, contentment in life. Where does one find contentment? Balance. We live in a time of polarization. You know, extreme extreme one way or the other, either to the left or to the right. Whatever happened to the middle ground? Whatever happened to the common good? See, it's either my way or the highway. And so we find ourselves divided rather than united. And, and when we're divided, we can't be content. We're always blaming someone or making our case. We're not 
being easy to get along with. We're being chumps, not champs. Paul isn't talking about happiness. He's talking about contentment. And there's a difference. And the way to contentment is this. Celebrate God all day, every day. Be in a good mood. Start with God. God loves us. Don't give in to the temptation of being a, a worry ward. Oh my gosh. Constantly worrying about everything. Well, we're really drawn to those folks, aren't we? Be a people person. Didn't say a people pleaser. A people person. Someone who cares, and you know who cares. I, I did a funeral this, this week for a friend, and there gathered was a young gal, and uh, afterwards you could tell she was having a difficult time. I walked up to her, and, and she was a pretty little girl, maybe between eight and nine, had freckles. And I said, those are the most beautiful freckles I've ever seen. And her eyes just lit up. It's the little things we do that make a difference. When we think about our moms and those folks who have influenced the life of the church, and there are plenty here at Bell Chapel, from Karen's mom, Joe, who worked with the young folks and showed them love and grace and patience. Ah, the Cameron's mom, who's a teacher and uh, always in church, raising the children to be a part of that service and ministry, always showing people kindness and love and grace who learned it from her mother, you see, that's how it works. Be a people person. Now, to do that, it's, it's not that complicated. Paul says it's very practical. Fill your mind with good thoughts. Fill your mind with good thoughts. I'd say, to hell you say. But, well, I can't because it's all my, most my last week. What are you going to do? Fill your mind with good thoughts. As complicated as our minds are, and they're more complicated than any com computer, they can only think of one thing at a time. Good thoughts. Let's have them. When I think of good thoughts and I think of Mother's Day, I think of generations. You want to flip that up and, oh, see, sometimes we're a little ornery. Joe always takes after his pap in that respect. Uh, he's more than a little ornery. And, and sometimes, well, how do you want to say it? You can see it in the eyes. So that's why his mother has a hold of him. And uh, once in a while we need that. Let's switch it to the next one. Generations. Uh, grandma, granddaughter, and mom. At one of our Mother's Day banquets, which we started to call all daughter banquets. Everyone was included, you see. And we had a great time. One of the things we missed this year was the fact that, well, we didn't have our old daughter's banquet. Why don't you have it? That's a good thought. Get together with your daughter or someone and, and have a dinner. You do the cooking. Maybe it'll just be a cup of macaroni and cheese. Or maybe the extravagant. Remember this. The one verse I constantly remind myself of from Paul's letter is Philippians 13, 4.13 I can do all things through Christ the, the verse goes I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I, I change it a little bit because well well I'm on the plank I change it to fit my understanding of God not to change scripture I can do all things through Christ who loves me. I can do anything. I can make a difference in the world and so can you. You can show appreciation and gratitude to those women who have shaped us in life and in faith. I'm suggesting you take these moments in life to do just that. To say thank you. Be creative about it. You can be. As creative as our young folks were with their little videos. Somewhere down the road of life, they're going to get those things out. 
or their mother will get those things out. And they'll see just how blessed they've been. Have a great Mother's Day. God bless you. One might ask, how does one stay positive? Well, you can see in the picture, we, we learned from example, you pass it on and they're all happy and smiling. One of the things my grandchildren learned early on was that if they wanted ice cream for breakfast, they got ice cream for breakfast. But I'm not a person who is always like that, and I came across my, one of my favorite poems written by Nadine Stair about life and, quite frankly, how we approach life. If I had my life to live over, I'd dare to make more mistakes next time. I'd relax. I would limber up. I would be sillier than I have been this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would climb more mountains and swim more rivers. I would eat more ice cream and less beans. I would perhaps have more actual troubles, but I'd have fewer imaginary ones. You see, I'm one of those people who live sensibly and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments, and if I had to do it over again, I'd have more of them. In fact, I'd try to have nothing else, just moments, one after another, instead of living so many years ahead of each day. I've been one of those people who never goes anywhere without a thermometer, or a hot water bottle, or a raincoat, and a parachute. If I had to do it again, I would travel lighter than I have. If I had my life to live over, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later in the fall. I would go to more dances, I would ride more merry-go-rounds, I would pick more daisies. Now that's a good life.